Loser! Loser! Okay, fans, this is Shadow Fury 3C3 with another exhibition match stream, and today we're gonna start out with a game between Lore and Orphelius on Titan Duel, which, as far as I can tell, is one of the last games that was actually played on version 1.3.5.1. A new version was released on Friday, I think. Yeah, I believe it was yesterday. And that was 1.3.6, which. The biggest change seems to be that Firewalkers are now much more powerful. I don't see either player using Jump Bots, so it won't matter, we won't see a difference, but that was a change. Anyway, this is Titan Duel. We wouldn't see people using Jump Bots because the mat map is very flat. For those of you who are not familiar, this map is probably one of the best vehicle maps in the game. And I mean that, like, this is one of the best vehicle maps. The main thing that makes it really nice is the way that you start in the corners and then have all these, these tiny choke points that allow for at partial choke points too. These lower areas here that slow units down when they try to go through them. It allows for some interesting defensive play where you basically are driving units around to body block your opponent. It's, this is the only map I've actually seen body blocking of any type work. And then the main the main game plan is typically start in the corners of course and then you go over to the other corners. Players try to take the corners. Sometimes players will try to spear through the center but usually players will try to go for one or both of the corners and then build up from there. So let's begin! Lodri going for Hovercraft. Lodri hasn't played Hovercraft in a long time, but this is one of Lodri's favorite ma favorite factories. I'm actually surprised that Lodri hasn't played it in a while, and it's kind of nice to see Lodri playing it now. Orphelius, on the other hand, going for the much more typical light vehicle factory, which is actually going to be building mostly slashers. One dart for scouting, and then after that we're going to have essentially the moving defender play. And Orphelius, being very paranoid, wants to make sure that... I, I guess he's he's reading Lowry going to be harassing around the back. This is quite sensible. Most players will harass around the back. Sometimes we'll see players go around to the side here, but usually they'll harass around the back. And that's exactly what Orphelius expects. That's actually apparently what Lowry is doing. They're in a position where they're going to have an easier time harassing from the north side. And that's exactly what they're doing. And at the same time, Orphelius... Well, Lowry called it. Orphelius called it. Both players are going to have no problems dealing with these scouts right now. Oh, okay. Lodri is saying that apparently they just played hovers when the mace was broken. Rather than because they really enjoyed it. But they played it now. So, that is interesting to note. Because, actually, they were quite nerfed. A lot of hovercraft stuff was nerfed several months ago. And we haven't seen hovercraft since. So, that's been an interesting change. Now that they are being played in this one match. Although, in the chat, Loder mentioning they want to try Scalpel Spam, so we're going to see a lot of Scalpel Spam, and that's what we're starting to see, which makes... Well, I don't know how much sense it really makes. I'm thinking Loder is kind of forcing this. I mean, Scalpel Spam against Scorchers, I would not recommend. And Loder hasn't really seen what Orphelius has. They know they have Slashers. Okay, against Slashers? Against Slashers, I can see Scalpels. I think their ranges are comparable. Let's see, the Slasher has... Slasher has a range of 600 elmos, while the... Ooh, never mind. Scalpel actually has a much, much, much smaller range. Much more damage, though. They could flit it in and out and deal with some damage that way. Because they deal three, oh, 600 damage a shot. Yeah, they one-shot Slashers. So despite the fact that they get into range of the Slashers, they do one-shot Slashers, which is a big deal. And Lori won't be able to do much with this harassment attempt. They're going to be getting caught out by this defender. They're going to lose at least one of the daggers. And... At are they going to go in anymore? Yeah, they're going in. They are going in. This is one mechs for two daggers. I do not agree with that trade. And actually, not even one mechs, thanks to the loss of that one dagger. Those Scorchers, however, are... Well... Chasing them away. They're doing their job. That's exactly what they're supposed to do. Orphelius in a pretty healthy position. Right now, both players have their economies about equal. Lori is setting up a little bit faster, I think. Orphelius' commander has decided to take a little break while... The mason over here is mostly focused on repairing the slasher, or sorry, the scorchers. And I really wouldn't recommend that at this stage of the game. Scorchers are, while not expendable totally, I wouldn't waste, I wouldn't spend time repairing them instead of getting more metal. Although Ophelia's getting energy, which is good too. Lori, on the other hand, they're actually way behind in energy. But at this stage in the game, they don't have to worry about it. They don't have anywhere near, like, Orphelius has to worry about it. Orphelius is very nearly excessing. In part because they aren't actually spending money on here, in part because they used a bunch of energy to repair. And they didn't actually spend that metal on anything else, because they had energy and metal parity. 
So Orphelius is not doing so hot right now. Lori, on the other hand, can totally get away with just building up metal extractors. They don't have to worry about energy for a while yet. Okay, they're, at the way their storage is going, it'll probably take about a minute or two before they even have to start worrying about building more energy. And they already are, because why not? But yeah, they're in a pretty healthy position. While Orphelius, that repair, that repair option was... That was a mistake. They really shouldn't have repaired right there. That use of energy is going to cost them. Because now they have to build more power plants. They haven't built more power plants yet. But building more metal is just causing excess. So Orphelius, basically at this point, their best bet is to try to go for effective raids. Hopefully get rid of Lodri's both metal and energy infrastructure since they're pretty much on par. Either one would be a good choice. Energy is, of course, the better choice due to the fact that you can't reclaim energy off of units. You can reclaim metal. These Scorchers going to their deaths! That was a really bad choice. Orphelius wisely backing off. I'm glad to see that. It's actually something I'm, I'm really glad to see people are being a bit more cautious about their units. I really enjoy when people make sure they don't just throw the units away. I've been trying to do it myself. It's tough to do. I know it's tough to do. This game is very high lethality. But it pays off. If you can make sure your units don't die, and you have an economy on par with your opponent, you can get ahead. But at this point, neither player is really w w wanting to risk any units. They're... They're both playing pretty cautious. Lori, however, has their spot. They have this... Well, is that going to work? Four scalpels, six scalpels against a couple slashers. The scalpels will beat the slashers. Like I said, they one-shot them. Like, 311 times two. So that's 311 per missile. That will one-shot a slasher. In fact, that might actually cause overkill. I'm not, I think these are under overkill protection because that would be sensible. Now, Orphelius, their commander, on the other hand... A, under a bit more risk. Now, is Lodri aware of the position of the commander? They are... not-ish? Well, they know there's something there. They don't necessarily know what. On the other hand, Orphelius has quite a good view of what's going on in the map. They're actually quite well informed about the position of all these scalpels. They're quite well informed about where to place their defenses. They, this is a pretty good stinger position. Except for the fact that the scalpels are going around. But even going around, the stinger still outranges them quite a lot. So that's... That chases them away. And that's that's where the commander is, that's where the slashers are. I mean, that'd be a great target if those scalpels could get in, but that that stinger is just not worth it. They're going to lose two or three scalpels, at least, and then they won't be able to kill the stinger because they won't have enough firepower to kill it with. So yeah, that's definitely not worth it. And interesting, Orphelius... I guess they're trying to make sure that just in case Lodri sets up an expansion, that seems to be the way they're going. But Lodri does have the, sla the scalpels right in the way, just to defend that. However, more focus on the Southwest expansion, which Orphelius has not really paid much attention to. In fact, Orphelius has no idea. If we look back at the radar view, we see that Orphelius just doesn't even know. They, don't, they aren't even aware that this exists. So, that is a little surprising. But all things considered, not too much of a shock. Why is it...? Oh, gotta fix that. Anyway. Not too much of a shock overall, though. So Orphelius right now is basically on par with Lori. Lori does have a nicer... Whoa, that's a really big defensive line. It's probably warranted, but at the same time, that might tip Orphelius off as to the expansion being done there. I mean, Orphelius knows the expansion isn't in the northeast. Their own commander now trying to... I mean, that took, that took long enough. Sheesh. But yeah, their own commander going to take it. Lodrin in the southwest is going to be able to hold this decently well. The Wolverines will start to take it out, but I don't think they're worried about it if they go for it. No, no, they're not. No, what am I saying? It's pretty obvious. Orphelius doesn't care about the southwest. They have their sights set a little bit further north, a little bit further east. Want to take this entire area out and then attack directly. And all things considered, that's the best path by far. This is the weakest defensive area. And this is actually, as you can see, a big lane right here. They can just walk right down and not have to worry about any defenses. I mean, they would have to worry about the mace, and they'd have to worry about the scalpel somewhat. But as far as static defenses are concerned, no concerns. So, the Wolverines versus Slashers, sorry, versus Scalpels. Wolverines get one shot. Like most things against Scalpels, Scalpels are really dangerous. You have to be very careful when facing against Scalpels. On the flip side, they do have like a 10 second reload time. So, yeah, exactly 10 second reload time. So that is the big concern. You don't want to be fighting them if... They're if they're loaded, but if they're in the middle of reload, they can get killed pretty quickly. Like you know, a dozen scorches or so. Speaking of which, speaking of a dozen scorches or, sh or so, we see that Orphelius did in fact go for that assault, did take out the mace rather surprisingly. 
that's not how the counter structure is supposed to work, you know. <laughs> but yeah, able to get enough numbers to take out that mace. I'm, it looks like these slashes were in there to take it out too. And this is where the scalpels have their moment of truth, and I'd say it's not particularly promising. Like I said, they can one-shot the slashers, but they can only shoot so often. And yes, overkill protection is definitely in effect. But at this point, Orphelius is in a very nice position. I mean, they have their Scorchers still. The, the Scalpels are very nearly dead. Scalpels are dead. Which means, at this point, there's not much that can be done with those units. I mean, Halberds are out, which is definitely a good choice against the Slashers. I do agree with that. And against the Wolverine Minefield. It's actually even better when it comes to the Wolverine Minefield. And the Gunship Switch has apparently been less than profitable. It's... Going air switch is one of those things that you want to do just because it gives you the different terrain options and gives you ability to kind of go above your opponent's defenses. But at the same time, it can be kind of tricky when your opponent has kind of pre-built defenses with the slashers. At the same time though, the fact that the scalpels got rid of the slashers means that the banshees do have a lot more free reign than they would have if those scalpels didn't exist. So I can kind of see where that switch comes in, but it is a mistake to make that all the time. Because players can often just read it. They just make a hard read. Or in this case, I mean, Orphelius has basically just gotten the unit that counters everything. Like, Slasher deals with gunships. Slasher deals with, well, riot ground units. Deals with a lot of things. And now Orphelius' commander is basically just setting up nicely in this nice little fire base. Get that set up. Should be able to tear apart Lodri's base pretty quick now. Lodri, on the other hand, they aren't out at all. By any means. But they are continuing to go for scalpels, which I'm not sure I understand the logic for. The halberds make perfect sense. They're going to punch through the minefield. They're going to punch through any slashers that are up in here. They're going to actually... Uh, probably going to help against the scorchers, too. A little bit harder to work against them, but they're definitely going to help against the slashers. Now, if that was, like, mace with that, if it was halberd and mace combined, Orphelius would have a much harder time dealing with that. Not impossible. Lodri is still not in the most healthy position, but yeah. I think mace would work. I'm not totally sure, but with the halberds kind of distracting everything else... The maces could get a lot of damage off onto the scorchers. On the other hand, though, that last fight is not inspiring my confidence in maces. I can kind of see what Lord meant by them being rather nerfed. Yeah. Really, this is just not going very well at all for Lodi. Now, how many banshees are up? Okay, so Lodi stopped the air. They stopped the airplay a while ago. And this is. Basically the last stand, I think that Lodri is going to be able to take over most of the Scorchers. But it, there's just too much. Even most of the Scorchers would leave about a dozen Scorchers left. Like, 20 Scorchers from Orphelius is just way too many to easily deal with. With How many units? Like, Oh, wait, them. <laughs> Metal Extractors. I don't care about those. Yeah, with a dozen units, Halberds and Scalpels. Neither of which really count as Scorchers. That was... That was kind of unfortunate. I'm not sure really what the motivation for testing Scalpels was. But against light vehicles, it's... Kind of hit or miss. Okay, apparently Scorcher Dive and Mace has worked no problem before. Oh, yeah, there's a hit. <laughs> I said hit or miss, right? Well, yeah, well, when it hits, it hits hard. Because Orphelius has decided to stop working with line move and decided to go for point move. It's line move. Saves your troops. But yet, yeah, Orphelius is going for the point move, which means the Scalpels will have a field day. That's the only reason why the Scalpels will have a chance in this game. Is if this continues this sort of play here. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think that Orphelius, or if it does, Orphelius just has enough to have 25 metal on Lowry. Yeah, they're doing extremely well. They're doing... I am surprised how well Orphelius is doing right now, just because they just... They were pretty even for the most part. It's just those scalpels did not do Lowry any good. That one... That one pair of shots right there, killing all those Scorchers, that was the only thing that actually made the scalpels have anything to show for. That's the only thing the scalpels had. Oh, and getting rid of all those maces. That was nice too. But otherwise, it's not helping at all. So I guess that is the test. An interesting test. Yeah, Lord pointing out the AoE. Yes, the AoE does help against Scorchers if the Scorchers are in a point, and Orphelius was moving them in a point. They weren't moving them in a line. Which kind of makes sense, because Scorchers do want to dive. They want to get close up. But they don't want to get close up when they're further away. And Lodri throws in the towel. That's GG. And that is game. That was the first game. It was rather surprising. Very much demonstrates how scalpels play out now. Scalpel versus Scorcher. And just in general how 
well, okay, maybe not how the hovercraft versus like vehicle matchup goes because Lori was forcing scalpels. They mentioned in the chat they were trying to test scalpels. I'd say that the test was kind of inconclusive, but still provided some interesting data. Anyhow, the match is going to be. There it is. The next match is going to be on Green Comet, which I think I may have shown once, and it's going to be Yogstoth and Lori. And this is going to be played on the new version. So this is going to be played on 1.3.6. I don't think either player is going to go for jump bots or anything that was really changed heavily in the last patch. There were other changes, but the Fireworker change was pretty much the biggest one. Okay, Daggers were also slightly cheaper, so the, that match would have been a little bit easier, but yeah. Basically, Firewalker and Moderator have been... Well, Firewalker's massively buffed, Moderator's slightly cheaper. And C ships have been made just generally better. Those are the big changes. So I'll be back with that in just a moment. Stay tuned. <laughs> 